stories from the field here at Talos. My name is Brad Garnett. I'm one of the leaders on the Cisco Talos Incident Response Team. And for all my CTI nerds out there, I'm going to go and put my hindsight bias hat on. And that will be kind of the story and the case study that I'm kind of sharing with you today. This was an incident that we were engaged with, with a customer in the telecom industry that we worked. So back to my hindsight bias comment, and that's really something that's near and dear to my heart. It's really that art of intrusion analysis, right? So this incident, like I said, was about four years ago, and it was actually before supply chain attacks were a thing. And very interesting, I'm not going to get into it and talk about attribution. We'll just say it was with a, a threat actor group commonly associated with a group in Eastern Europe, likely uh, the adversary here in this case. But it was, it was very interesting in regards as far as the data sets, but then again, like I mentioned, hindsight, right? Um, st still looking at some of the intrusion data, IP addresses that were used for command and control, DNS, domain names that were used, and why maintaining that data, those metrics, those indicators of compromise and those TTP is really are really interesting looking back on this intrusion four years later. Every now and then, you know, I always like to refer back to this case as an incident response professional and just look and see what the adversary is doing, right? And if you're familiar with the diamond model, right, command and control, some of these indicators of compromise, you know, an adversary needs some type of infrastructure, right? So if you're familiar with the diamond model, the adversary targeting the victim, infrastructure, then of course, what's the capability or the TTPs associated with that with that adversary. But what's very interesting here is, um, in this particular case, like I mentioned a while ago, it was a supply chain attack. Uh, this was a telecom customer, and they were go going to market with a new uh, service offering, right? So just kind of put yourself in it from the consumer's point of view for this particular client going to take your laptop, right, your consumer laptop to a store, right? Think about when you take it to like a retail establishment and then that technician will run some type of diagnostic software on that machine. That's That was exactly what this infrastructure here. It was a uh, research and development network that uh, was attacked, right, where the adversary installed an implant, right, a back door, right, maintaining uh, persistence over the course of about or three or four weeks, you know, up into a third party notification. Um, looking back on it, and you know, I've been monitoring, um, for example, a lot of the, the DNS data, the callouts associated with this uh, particular threat actor, this particular intrusion going back uh, to 2016. And you know, you, you definitely see those heartbeats. Um, you can see where the adversary is kind of tearing down, you know, different infrastructure, uh, reusing infrastructure, reusing this same infrastructure. Uh, this command and control channel. But back to what I what I initially opened with, right? Why it's important to understand to maintain those intrusion sets, right? When you look at your organization's capabilities, the technologies, the security instrumentation that you have in place, it's very important to understand what are your organizational requirements? What is that threat model? Do you have a threat model, right? Those are one of the things that we often advise customers with through the Talos Incident Response Retainer. So really understanding your organizational need, the requirements are very important. So in, in this particular uh, in, intrusion, like I said, you know, it, it took place over several weeks and there ended up being a, a third party notification on it. But what's very interesting today, and that's really the, the message that I wanna uh, kind of close out with is to make sure whatever you're collecting, DNS data, NetFlow data, all of the, all this diff these different data sources that you're collecting, maybe it's in your SOC, whoever is, is maintaining that data and analyzing that data, hopefully it's your security operations center, maybe it's an MSSP, maybe you have someone kind of in-house, right, because you're a small medium organization that's doing that, but the best form of intelligence that you have are those intrusions, those specific incidents, those intrusion sets that are targeting your organization. And that's really what you want to focus on. So if you're a CISO trying to build out a security program or really trying to say, what does my threat model look like? Start by looking at those prior incidents that's impacted your organization. So that's kind of my story from the field today. I hope you've enjoyed it and we will talk to you next time. Thank you.